no powders, no potions. I want to Long jump in on, on, on uh, Peter for a second and get your thoughts. Yeah. Now, he made this change and he made the change through keto and he was very vocal about how ama amazing keto was for this yeah. change. Yeah. Had he followed the vertical diet, had he followed the Dolce diet, how, had he followed the Mediterranean diet, very likely he would have seen similar changes in body composition, lean mass. Agreed. And he's been arguing how the vertical diet's wrong, the Dolce diet's wrong, the Mediterranean, not, not by name, but theoretically by saying the keto is the best, the other whole food, you know, omnivore. Hydrates in general is the argument for keto people. And now he, he bounces hmm. to our programs. So he, and this again is, is why I stand on this soapbox. So the people listening and watching can understand great minds, good people like Dr. Peter Atia, though yelling from his you know, mountain for so long, eventually comes to the place that we were three years ago when we were like, hey, Pete, no, that's not right, brother. The omnivoric is the way to go. The body weight will come down. Insulin sensitivities will normalize based upon what medical you know, history you may or may not have. Um, we're already here doing it. So don't waste the three years bouncing around and, and getting the electrolyte drinks and having the, the diarrhea issues and the breath and all that. Keto risking stick. Keto <laughs> stick and risking deficiencies and just having, so there's some issues. Let's just normalize your diet. Let's, let's eliminate this disordered style of eating. And let's just kind of start eating real food, just like your wide variety, good, healthy ingredients. You know, let's kind of start doing that dance. So happy that you want to be making this lifestyle change. But you're going to end up here in, in three months or three years anyway. Like, why not just start here? No, you hit the nail on the head. You're going to end up here. Yep. And if the, keto, yeah, if the keto lifestyle helps you to comply, you know, even short term, and you can get some you know, significant health benefits, then I think that's great. But you're, too, you're, you're a good politician. Well, you're, you're very, I, I love you. You're so man. I, I'm give me a, give me a race to, to vote for you and brother. I, I want people that I want people to implement some sort of change in their life and to have a, uh, you know, a plan to do so. But like you said, you're going to end up here and that's what the research shows us. That's what the largest research from the weight control registry of 10,000 people who've been tracked for over 10 years who have lost, you know, on average 66 pounds and kept it off for five years or, or more. When ad libitum, when you leave them to their own druthers and let them eat as they prefer, generally speaking, the macros include about 150 grams of carbs a day. Some people a little bit more depending on their activity level. So you're going to end up here anyhow. And my point is with compliance, long term, I don't like looking at three month or six month studies and maybe not even a year, even though those are equivocal when they looked at thousands of different diets those are pretty equivocal in, in terms of performance, weight loss, body composition. But the weight loss retention, uh, you and I, again, we're focused on, you know, performance during that time. And we really believe that those carbohydrates have a benefit, particularly for active people. Uh, there's some, it was Brad Schoenfeld, I was thinking of the book Hypertrophy, and he writes a, yeah. a paragraph in this book talking about the importance of, of carbohydrates, particularly in the sarcoplasmic reticulum, for their benefit for releasing calcium, which helps with muscle contraction, the, the troponin and tropomyosin uh, trigger for, uh, you know, actin myosin, uh, uh, you know, muscle contraction and relaxation. So there is a specific mechanism that we can point to, and I hate doing that because, you know, everybody in this industry always finds some sort of biological mechanism of action to explain why it could work or should work, even though it doesn't actually work. <laughs> we see a lot of that. We, of we saw that with Dr. Rhonda Patrick when she got on Joe Rogan's show and said that intermittent fasting raised growth hormones, so therefore you would build more muscle. I'm like, that's not happening at a calorie deficit, Rhonda. It's, yeah. it's just not. <laughs> and, 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 and it's about, you know, fatty acid metabolism has nothing to do with anabolism. But people say those true. kinds of things. PhDs who are widely respected and that gets put out yeah. as, as fact yeah. when more proven strategies get completely overlooked simply for the, their simplicity. Yeah. Too easy, can't do it. That's not going to work. I'm going to go fast on, you know, 800 calories and, and try and burn 32 and I'm going to gain lean muscle tissue due to growth hormone output. Right, right. 
and I'll readily concede these people are a lot smarter than I am. I'll readily concede. If you, if you want to have a conversation about biochemistry or, you know, physiology, then, then, you know, knock yourselves out. Well, I I'll can talk about nineties rap then. If we want to go yeah. deep into a, into a subject that might not have any bearing on reality, on right. real world outcomes, then let's, let's talk about that. Bingo. Um, outcomes. So outcomes. That's what it's. That's the job here. That's why people listen to you and me. They want outcomes. They, yes. they, they got fucking Google, right? You, you can go watch it. Shit. You go fall into a TED talk hole if you want right. to just really have your mind blown. But you want to wake up tomorrow, bigger, leaner, stronger, faster, cholesterol balancing out, A1C normalizing, increasing long term health outcomes, short term sports performance. I get passionate here. Um, 100%. This is, this, this is what first got it. it that be, has become my passion now, probably because I'm a competitive spirit. It's more of this side and, and it's biased, right? You know, I, I know I'm very biased and I'm pushing that bias a little loudly for the end user um, uh, again. 